Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to be introducing to you um, the 74LS93 4-bit ripple counter. So what we're doing is we're working on asynchronous counters, of course, still, but what we're going to do is we're going to move from small scale integration, which is where I was programming or, or wiring each flip-flop individually, into medium scale integration. Okay, so real quick, this is the 74LS93 4-bit ripple counter, and we call it the 4-bit ripple counter, by the way, because inside of this one chip, there are four flip-flops. They happen to be JK negative edge triggered flip-flops. I know that they're negative edge triggered, by the way, from this because I have the bubble right next to the triangle here, so that tells me negative edge triggered. Okay. We also have on the left hand side. Oh, so you'll notice, by the way, if we we're gonna we we're gonna name the four flip flops, the very first flip flop would be flip flop A. The second one would be B. The third one would be C. The fourth one would be D. And what you would notice here is that A has its own clock input and B has its own clock input, and that's on the left hand side. If you haven't paused the video to to write this information down, I would suggest that you probably do that. Okay. All right, so other things before we move forward then, you have two reset mechanisms on the left-hand side, and you can reset this flip, this uh, 74LS93 to 0, 0, 0, 0. You can reset it to 0 at any given time by taking RO1 and RO2 and making them both 5 volts at the same time. So if those are both having getting a 1, okay, it'll reset to 0. It'll clear out the mechanism. But both of them have to be 0 in order, or excuse me, both of them have to be a 1 in order to get the zero out, okay? Now, real quick, before we go any further, um, I want to refresh your memory, you know, here's some counters that we've built. This is one counter that we've built in a previous lesson, four bit counter, okay, just like what we have. I know these are D flip flops, but they work exactly the same, okay? And notice what we have is the output of Q of the first one of A, excuse me, the output of A runs into the clock for B, the output of B, becomes the clock for C, the output for C becomes the clock for D, right? So that's how we got this thing to count upward as we tied the output of one to the input, the clock input of the next. And the reason that I bring that up now, just to refresh your memory, is because this is what the inside of the 74LS93 chip looks like. It's really divided into two segments. So you have flip-flop A up here, and it has its own clock mechanism, and it has its own output. You have B has its own clock input, but what about C and D? What about their clock inputs? How do they get those to function? Well, you'll notice what they've done is they've taken inside the chip and said, okay, well, the output of B is going to become the input of C. The output of C will become the input of D, and it's just like this previous slide, right? The output of B is the input of C, C becomes D. The difference is this wire here does not exist inside the chip does not exist inside the chip, okay? So what that means for us is this. We can, if we want to, use just flip-flop A, and we can create a divide by two counter. In other words, a counter that goes zero, one, zero, one. We can just use clock B, and BCD will run together to have a three flip-flop circuit, a three-bit circuit, so it's a divide by two, divide by four, divide by eight. It's called the divide by eight section, okay? So we can count all the way up to seven with that, or we can bring them all together. So for that, I have some demonstrations for you, okay? Here is, should have zoomed out first, here is what a divide by one would look like with just flip-flops, okay? And again, these are D, but it works the same, okay? Notice that I have the clock going into input A. I have the output of A is the only one that's actually connected right now to the DCD hex. I could connect the others, you know, I could take this to the eighth spot, but look, it's not doing anything. No, there's nothing running. B, C, and D are not even running because the wire that clocks in B, C, D is not tied together. Now, that seems really silly. It's a waste of three flip-flops, but I could do it, okay? Notice what I've done is I've taken the clock input and I've tied it to ground, and that basically just says you're never going to have the positive edge that you need to clock here, so I'm not using it, right? Well, here's what it would look like with the 74LS93. This is the exact same circuit, okay? But the flip-flops are inside of here. So the resets I've got tied to ground because I just don't want to reset anything in this demonstration, not in this video. Clock input A is also tied to ground because I'm not going to use it. The only flip-flop that's being clocked is the flip-flop A. And even though I have B, C, and D tied to this and going into the DCD hex, A is the only one that's functioning. B, C, and D aren't even working.
So that would be using this as a one bit counter. That's what it would do. How about if I did a three bit counter? Okay, oh, sorry. Let's stop that simulation. Come over here and play this one. All right, here we go. Okay. So I've made some modifications here. The clock is now going into input B. Okay, so see this? The input for clock A is not being used. I've tied that off to ground. And it basically says, I'm not going to use you for flip-flop. I'm only going to use flip-flops B, C, and D. Now, I did have to make a modification here. Okay, notice that even though this says 1s, 2s, 4s, and 8s, really now this has become my 1s digit. And this has become my twos, and this has become my fours. So this is mislabeled. I should have changed that before I made the video. What it makes a difference for here, though, is the fact that I do need to adjust my wires and move this over till it's the one spot. Okay, this becomes the two, and the yellow becomes the four. So I can count all the way up to seven, just like you see here. Now, what that would mean, again, that's silly. It's a waste of a flip-flop. Why would you put that one in? Okay, but if you were tight, if you have a four-bit counter like the 74LS93, you have four flip-flops regardless you have to use. Okay, so what we have is this. Here's the same circuit. Now, the clock is tied into B. Notice that B, C, and D are the three outputs that I use. So B goes all the way to the one spot now. And I'm only counting up to seven here. This is the ones, twos, and fours, and I did adjust my labels here, okay? A simply isn't used. It doesn't run. You can see it never turns on, but that's because the clock for input A is tied to ground, so it's never been used. So the question then becomes, obviously, how do I get all four of these to work together? What if I want to count all the way up to 15 or F in hexadecimal, right? Well, it's really simple, okay? If this wire here does not exist, let's just add it. Now A, B, C, and D would work together, right? So let's take the output of A and let's make it become the clock for B. On the 74LS93, what that would look like is this. Let's take the clock for B and get its signal from the output for A. So you're gonna see this little wraparound wire and it's a little bit confusing until you understand why, okay? In essence, you are adding the same wire each time. This wire, is the same thing as this wire. And when I do that now, and I hit play, dang it, I gotta stop my other side. Okay, when I hit play now, you're gonna see that these two circuits do the exact same thing, and they both count up now to F. Not synchronized, but they both accomplish the same purpose. Okay, so that's the 74LS93 chip. Okay, and again, real quick, just to, show you in slide form. This is what it looks like. You're gonna take A and you're gonna tie it into the input for B and you have to do that externally. So you have to have an extra wire that jumps over the top of your chip in order to make this work because the rest of these are all internal, okay, inside the chip. Couple of notes about this before I, I quit. 74LS93 is really, really convenient. I mean, <laughs> take, take a look at this. Which one do you wanna wire? Do you wanna do this one or do you wanna do this one? Okay, I mean, that's a really simple choice to make here as far as which cheap chip is easier to wire up and use. Okay, really convenient, really super simple to use. However, there are a couple of limitations. The big ones are this. If you put five volts in a one into those RO1 and RO2 inputs, it always resets to zero, 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 zero. There's nothing else that you can reset to. So if you need a counter that goes three, four, five, three, four, five, three, four, five, you're not gonna be able to use this chip. You always have to start at zero. The other limitation is the 93 chip only counts up. So if you need a down counter, it's not going to function for you. We do have other chips that I'll introduce later. But if your design calls for something that starts at zero and counts up, the 74LS93 is the choice, the best choice to use. So hopefully that makes sense. That's the 74LS93 4-bit ripple counter.